I'm set. I'm set. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Sunday. All right. So, everything going good for everybody? Had a great week and everything? All right. So, real deal. I want everybody to be honest with this question. How was the lesson for y'all? Did y'all like it? I think Brother Wayne liked it because he. Was it difficult at all, or straight just simple, or straight, straight, to straight, straight, to straight, straight to the point? Okay, all right. So at first, when I looked at this lesson, I was gonna do something else with it, like a totally different passage. I'm happy I actually read and studied the lesson because that would not have worked <laughs> with this passage. This passage is like the foundation of our faith. It tells everything of how Christianity works, how faith works in God. Man, this blessed my soul. I know it's going to bless y'all too, so we're going to dive into this passage, man. So to dive, the title of today's lesson for my uh, book is Called to Life in the Spirit. Is that y'all title? Yeah. All right, let's read it together. Called to Called Life, life in, in the Spirit. Spirit. All right, the key verse, Romans 8, verse 1 says, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ All right, Romans 8, 1. All right, so... We're going to read these verses, and then we're going to break it down and talk about it. Everybody's going to say what they think about the passage and what God has told you about this passage. And we're going to go verse by verse. We're going to have a lot of fun, all right? I promise. So I need somebody to start off with verse 1. And, yeah, we know how we do. Just everybody reads and keep it going because we don't got that many people. There, therefore, now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Two, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Number three, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do, but sending his own, his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. <coughs> or, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Number five, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their mind on the things of the spirit. Verse six, to see a man on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Number seven. For this reason, the mind is, that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. He does not submit to God's law. Indeed, he cannot. And, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But, but you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Because the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. Ten, but Christ is in you through the body, is, so the body is dead because of sin. The Spirit is life because of righteousness. Number 11, if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, <coughs> He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through the spirit that dwells in you. Well, so then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. Number 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death, the deeds of the body, you will live. 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. All right. Y'all ready for this? All right. Father, thank you so much for your wonderful word. Thank you for presenting it to us and allowing it to just teach us, to guide us through life, Father, and for it to be a blueprint to strengthen us, to help us to live a godly life and to live by your spirit so we don't miss out on hearing from you, experiencing life with you, and having Jesus right there by our side. We thank you for the power of your word and of you. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that this word manifests and just 
abides in each and every one of us, Father, and you just stir up that gift that you place in each and every one of us, the gift of your spirit, Father, and your grace and your mercy. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you please have your way in this room. Speak to each and every one of us and reveal to us the truth that's going to carry us throughout life. Father, help us never forget this message and forget about you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so quick question. You have a million dollars. I give you a mansion. I give you uh, an option to have your dream car, so mine would be a, a, a Bugatti. <laughs> a Lambo, whatever you want, or a parachute. Oh, so it's four things, right? So mansion, million dollars, your dream car, or a parachute. Which one are you going to pick? I'll take the parachute. Why are you going to pick the parachute? Because you're going to fall. <laughs> you're going to fall. Uh -huh. You need a parachute to catch you. All right. Would anybody else pick a parachute if I just give you those four no, options? No, not me. All right, what are you going to pick? I'll pick a house, the mansion. The mansion? Why? Because if, you know, the, and the spiritual answer would be, I want to live in the mansion with Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the earthly thing, I, I just like a big, nice mansion. All right. Anybody going for a million dollars? You? All right. Anybody going to pick the dream car? No? Not interest? All right, cool, cool. <laughs> So it's, been, it's all, all that question is like if I change the scenario for you guys, like you're falling out of the airplane, which one of those four are you going to pick? <laughs> <laughs> right? So like this is what this passage is talking about. Everybody, it says in uh, Romans 6 verse 23 that uh, there's no one righteous, no, not one. There was only one righteous and they all have fallen short. Everybody. So, and this passage is talking about that as well. So Jesus is our parachute. He saves us from destruction, from plummeting into our death. And so just like, you know, fish need water, we need Jesus. Just like humans need oxygen, we need Jesus. And that's what this passage is talking about. So I want to ask you guys another question. Who follows all ten of the commandments? Who can say that they follow it no. to, to no, T? Why do you think so? Because we already told us we're not righteous, not one. All right. So, okay. Okay. So, like, you know, a lot of people, they look at the commandments and they say, you know, I follow that. Yeah, I do that too. I ain't never commit murder. I ain't never stolen before. I ain't never. I respect my mother and father. Like, so you look at the Ten Commandments. You're like, yeah, I follow it. But a lot of people, you don't look at it in depth. You know. So, like, uh, James two verse ten. Man, this verse gets me. It says, for whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at one point is guilty as breaking them all. Oh. Yes. Yes. So a lot of people, they're willing to put their money in the bank on themselves because they think that they follow all ten of the commandments. You know, they don't, they don't think that they have any idols. They don't think that they have no other gods before God because, you know, God's a jealous God. So it's all this stuff, you know. They don't covet. Come on now. In today's culture, everybody covets. But anyways... So, like, if you look at the commandments in depth, man, like, it says if you, if you just fall in one time, you committed, you, you failed to complete the whole law. You're doomed for destruction. You're going to hell. And so, like, if you ever stolen anything before, has anybody stolen anything before? It could be the littlest thing. I've stolen plenty of pins. That means I'm going to go to hell. <laughs> so, like, we were to judge each other, like, righteously, like that, like, do you covet? Like the tenth one says, you must not be envious of your neighbor's goods. Oh, man, that's tearing everybody up. You shall not be envious of his house. Come on. Nor his wife. How many people be checking out people's wives? Come on. Or husbands. Or anything that belongs to your neighbor. That's all our culture does. There ain't, I can't think of one person who don't do that. Because you get jealous by what you see. You know, other pastors get jealous of big pastors like Joe Osteen. Why he got a church like that? He don't even preach that good. I'm better than him. Covenant. You know, so like, that's a sin. That can put you in hell. So are you willing to bank everything on yourself to get into heaven? You know? So we need Jesus. He's our parachute. You know, we are all plummeting into death. You know, the wages of sin is death. But to get to God, okay. Yeah. Back to what you were saying. Like you might say, you might look at the actual one or two, or look at go out on your front porch and see your neighbor got a beautiful house. You might say, I wish I had that. Oh, I wish I had his car. I wish I had, you know. Mm -hmm. But you don't, but the main thing, you don't go out to try to get what your neighbor got. My mom told me, it's all right to, you know, wish for something. 
But when you go after what your neighbor got, that's the problem. Yeah. All right. And then I did this analogy a long time ago. When I first came back to Nashville in August, I said, uh, if you ever committed rape, if you did, if you do child pornography, I know this is very blunt, but I'm gonna keep on going. You molest the teenagers, murder somebody, you bombed a theater. That's a crime, right? Mm -hmm. What would an earthly judge do if there's evidence against you and it's undeniable? You're, you're going to jail, right? Yeah. So like, you're guilty. There's no way of getting out of it. So you can't get out of it with an earthly judge. What do you think God gonna do mm -hmm. if he judged righteously, fairly? You know? So, th man, like, are you willing to put your money in the bank on yourself? So, so again, Romans 6, 23, I'm going to break every single verse down, man. This is ridiculous. Like, this is what you guys need to do. You look at a verse, break it down, man. So it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, like, it says the wages of sin is death, okay. So there's a penalty, there's consequences, there's a result for breaking the Ten Commandments for going against God's law. That's a sin. It leads to death. I don't want to die. Do you want to die? I mean, we're going to die anyways, but you know, like that kind of death. Hell, that's what it's talking about, right? Destruction. Uh, torment for the rest of your if eternity, of, of eternity. But the gift of God is eternal life. Man, I like gifts. Gifts are free. You don't have to do anything to get a gift. It's a gift from God. It is eternal life. And it's through Jesus Christ our Lord, right? So that goes to like Acts 4, verse 12. It says, salvation is found in no one else. There's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which one must be saved. So no one can make it to heaven without Jesus. All right? So everything we talk about when we break down these verses are going to point back to this, those two analogies I just gave. All right? So y'all ready to break this down, man? All right. So quick question. We're about to have some fun. No condemnation. Y'all ready for this? Ooh, man. Verse 1. All right. What is the worst sin you ever committed? I'm not going to make y'all answer that. That's embarrassing. You know what I mean? What's the worst sin you ever committed? It's a shame. You can't even say it, right? Is anybody bold enough to say You know what I mean? Yeah, see? So the, what's the worst sin you ever committed? So, like, why do we judge anybody? If you can't even say what your sin is. You remember when Jesus was uh, with the Pharisees and they brought him a prostitute, that, well, somebody that committed adultery, and they said, what should we do with him, Jesus? They wanted to stone her. They said, well, can we stone her? They were trying to trap him. And they, he did something they didn't even think that he would do, you know? And so he told them, to those who have, who, yeah, to those who are without sin, they get to cast the first stone. And they all walked away, you know? So we're all guilty, right? All right. So, all right. So Galatians 5.1, this is one of my favorite verses. All right. Y'all ready for this? It says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. The yoke of slavery is sin. Freedom is in Christ. He has set us free from this, from the law. Man, so stand firm and do not submit again to it. Man, so you are free. You are forgiven. You don't have to be ashamed of your sin any longer. So whatever it was, there's no condemnation. We're about to go to that. So Romans 8, verse 1. There, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, man. What do y'all think about that verse, man? Don't that make you want to shout? <laughs> there's no condemnation, man. So, And that goes back to John 3, verse 16 through 18. You know how many times it said condemnation? Look at this. It says, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Oh, my gosh. You got to believe in Christ, right? Because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son, the parachute, man. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. There's no condemnation, but to save the world through Jesus. Man, whoever believes in him is not condemned. You're not condemned if you believe in him. If you believe that he is the reason for the season, I'm just kidding. If you believe that he's the reason to, for glory, for you to get there, if you believe and you put your faith in that, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Do you know how many times this reiterates? Just in this passage alone and just throughout the whole entire Bible, like Colossians 
2 verse 14, having canceled the charge of legal indebtedness, <coughs> which stood against us and, not, and condemned us, it condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Man, so you see where this is going? So y'all know that song that uh, DeWitt sings? You know, Calvary settles it all. Yeah. You know that's on YouTube? Calvary settles it all. Y'all should listen to it. He got like four or five videos on YouTube, man. Like, because he be traveling and doing music. But anyways. Uh, so you are restored. You are born again. You are set free. You are bound for the promised land. So I'm going to break it down even further. You know how uh, this world tells you they put labels on us. They say you're African American. You're black. You're white. You're Mexican. Put labels. They say you're fat. You're skinny. They say you're ugly, you're pretty. They always put labels, right? But that doesn't, you know, where does, where does your identity come from? Who are you? Does the world know who you are? Or does the Bible know who you are? Does God know who you are? So God doesn't say, he doesn't judge by appearance, right? So there ain't no ugly or pretty. There ain't no black and white. There's no race. There's only one human race. I mean, there's only one race, and that's the human race, right? There's only believers and unbelievers. That's all that matters. Right? Nothing else matters. But we put labels to put division in this world. That's the way it works, right? So, you know, this world wants you to feel condemned, wants you to feel ashamed, right? So, yeah, all right, I'll talk about all that later on. But let's go to verse 2. All right, Romans 8, verse 2. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Yeah, man, so like the law of the Spirit. What is the law of the Spirit? Okay. The yeah, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So there's a different law when you when you accept Christ in your life. The law of the Spirit, it gives life. It sets you free from the law of sin. The law of sin, the one that condemns you. The law of sin and death, man. You couldn't keep that if you tried. But then it keeps on breaking it down in other verses, saying that, you know, those laws, the sin, death, you know, the Holy Spirit helps you to keep the law. It's something that you couldn't do by yourself, but by depending on Christ, by his spirit, he gives life. And he helps you to, to work, work, a work start happening in you, within you. And it sets you free from that law, and you receive life. And the penalty of Christ, you know, he pays the way for, you know, all that. But, you know, what? Like, I'm going to skip because I want to break it all down, but I want to make it more, make more sense, too. Y'all have any ideas yet? Um, what is more easier to, uh, okay, to live in? In the spirit? Okay. Is it easier to live in a life of the spirit of Christ or in, in a life of the flesh? Mm -hmm. What, what, what do y'all think? I think, um, uh, mm -hmm. this is what Paul was to them that with flesh with our flesh we can't do it but with the spirit the Holy Spirit leading God us we can and this is one of the reasons that Jesus came uh, the Father sent him because we couldn't keep the law but now we don't seem to keep the law and we don't even uh, worry about the spiritual part of our soul Right. But we just do what we want to do. We just live to be living. Okay. And I guess they don't think there's no um, punishment for it. You know, just live. We just, I guess we'll just die. You see people say, oh, I'm just, well, I'm gone, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. But it's not so. Right. The book teaches us that's not right. And, and uh, if we believe that, heaven happens. Right. <laughs> have them help them because we have got, and the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I didn't believe that. But now that I get older, I know that I can't make it without the Holy Spirit leading and guiding me and keeping me out of trouble. Because yeah. it's easy to get in trouble living the spirit, I mean, uh, Flush. the fleshy life. Yeah. Because we see that. Mm -hmm. And what we see, uh, it's what we usually go after. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Brother Dole. 
And they, yeah. Brother Wayne asked the question, which is easier yeah. to live in the spirit of the flesh? Mm-hmm. It's easier to live in the flesh than it is in the spirit. Yeah. Now, most people will give you a, a church answer, so it's the spirit. Yeah. No, you can live in the flesh way down easier than you. You look at the world on a percentage where which is you see more people living in the flesh or the spirit. Yeah. Flesh. So you see which is easier. Yeah. It drives us up, don't But see, it's, it's almost just like, you know, when you would, Miss Nelman was saying, if you uh, was in an airplane, do you want a parachute? But everybody going to say, yeah. Yeah. And if you see a lot of people walking down the street, getting on the plane with the parachute, you think they know how to jump and all that. Mm-hmm. But it don't really count till you put to the test. Right. When it's time for you to hop out the door. Now, I can sit here with my parachute on. I look like, hey, he know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. But when it's time for me to jump out the door, that's when the rubber meets the road. Right. And see, that's the same way it was Christ. You know what it said, called to live us in the spirit. Everybody think they live in the spirit, but it's not. Mm-hmm. You're not. Right. You have to know Christ before you can live in the spirit. Okay. <laughs> so we know what was what is easier. I mean, we're all, I can't say we all are saved, but most people in here are born again, because I don't know your hearts, right? So hypothetically speaking, everybody's saved in here, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's born again. So there's an old way that you used to live. Right, right. It should be a total change when you're in Christ. Am I wrong? So, like, he asked, which one's easier, the flesh, to to live by the flesh or the spirit? Man, Paul even talks about it, man, in Romans 7. Before Romans 8, I don't know if y'all did this verse last week, but uh, he said, uh, he said a lot in all his passages, all his gospels, but anyway. So I find the law of this at work within me. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in, the, in my inner being, I delight in God's law. I want to do God's law, but I see another law at work in me. That's the flesh. Oh, my gosh. Don't, we, don't you feel that? Don't you feel that way? It's raging war against the law of my mind. It's a constant battle. It's making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am, man. I hate this struggle. I hate this battle because I want to serve God. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. Man, without Christ, you can't do it. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law. But in my (laughs) sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. There's a battle waging, guys. I know you feel it. But God delivers you. From that battle. He helps you to overcome that battle. And before you knew Christ, you didn't have that war, that war raging. You automatically did it. You automatically sinned. You tried to do what God wanted you to do, but you didn't have that power. And it's kind of like the disciples. When you really look at the passages, there's a way that disciples used to act. But then when Christ came back and was resurrected from the dead and the spirit came, it was a totally different ball game. And that's what I was going to do with this lesson, actually. So I'm just going to go there right now. So the disciples, before they had the spirit, how were they? Peter would talk a good game, but he ain't walk it. Jesus said, I'll never. Jesus said, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, I'll never deny you. I'll die with you, Jesus. Jesus told the disciples, y'all are going to desert me. Y'all are going to forsake me. When they come for me. What did they they say? No, we wouldn't. No, we wouldn't. We would die with you. They said they reiterated what Peter said. We agree with Peter. You don't know what you're talking about. What would you do if Jesus said you're gonna do something? What would you do? We gonna say I'm not gonna do that. No, it's God. You know, if, if I'm in that situation, I asked everybody in my life group on Friday. I said, What would you do if Jesus told you that you were gonna deny him three times? I said that I would just get down on my knees. I said, God, please help me not to do it. Please, please. You know what? That's how I would do it. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ask him to help us. Mm-hmm. But yeah. You got to go back. The only way you're gonna be able not to do what you just said, you got to study and study and study. Mm-hmm. If you don't study, that flush is gonna beat you out. Right. Okay. And that's all I was gonna to go to. Uh, you wanna say something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Going back to that question that you asked us first. Okay. Out of, out of four items, what will you choose? And and then see, the flesh took over. Mm. 
Uncle you had the money, you had the college, you had the, the, uh, like the cars, the, the house, and then, and then had a little silver thing. Right. Type of shit. And then battle not being in the spirit. See, our earthly took over and said, yeah, give me some money. You know, I can buy a house and a car with money. Parishes, we didn't think about that. But then that's how we think. We're so much living in the flesh and all the time that in, in a state of need, okay, we don't think about the spirit of things because the flesh takes over 24-7. Right. Yeah. That's what, and that's where I was going to go at, too. Oh, okay. What are you going to say? Right. <laughs> right, okay. So you can see the same so with what you all didn't really do. Sean didn't finish the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just put four things out there. He ain't put no spiritual or physical to it. Yeah. And so the flesh don't say, hey, which one of these do I want? Mm -hmm. The flesh don't pick either one of them, you know. Yeah, and that's, what, that's the whole point. So we look at things in the flesh, right? Yeah. yeah like, whoo, we get excited. Yeah. And we go after it, right? Am I wrong? You go right for it. You don't even think. Especially if it's like your desire that entices you, right? And you really want it. You, ain't nothing can stop you from that, right? So, but if you change the scenario, let's say if you knew the exact moment that you were going to die. You go, let's say you knew, if I said that, a, you know, they're going to come, you know, take all the Christians right now. You know, get them all. If you profess Christ and there's evidence against you on social media or whatever, you're guilty. And they're going to, like, torture us. And they're going to kill you, but they're going to torture you really, really bad before that happens. Don't be completely honest, okay? Because some people be like, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. You know, I'm going to die for Christ. No, let's change the scenario. You got to, look, they're going to cut off your private parts if you're a guy. If you profess Christ. If you're a woman, they're going to put acid in your private part. You going to deny him? See, you can only do it through Christ, through the spirit. You change the whole scenario, right? So, like, if you really knew that moment was going to come, would you not act differently towards God? Would you not depend on him more than ever? And that's how you should be living when you change the scenario. See, the, I'm, my, my desire, women, okay? Women entices me. But if you put me in that situation, do you think a woman's going to entice me? No, I'm going to depend on Christ. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how it should be every day of your life, man. What fuels you impacts the quality of your ride. So I was going to ask you guys a question. I kind of spoiled it already. I already said it at that point. But if you never did got maintenance done on your car, what would happen to your car? And you try driving it. Can you drive it? That's how we go through life. We, we just, you know, run towards the wrong things. And Paul even said it. He said, you know, I run, don't run aimlessly towards things. It's like fighting the wind. You know, you live your life and you're going towards the wrong things. You know, that's what you're doing. So, yeah. And then I was going to ask you guys another question. If, let's say we have a vacant house, right? Nobody's been in it for years. And you left all the windows open. Mm. What would happen to that house? <laughs> would you not see some items and animals in there that you don't want to see? <laughs> so stuff from actually... Right. And so that's what it's like living in the spirit. So how you practice is how you play. Amen. If you don't take care, and but Adol even said, if you don't take care of things of the spirit, if you don't feed your spirit more, you keep on feeding your flesh, right. what's going to happen in your life? You know what I'm saying? So your life is a reflection of what's important to you. Your life is an indicator of what work you put in. So if you got all these problems, you don't have peace. Man, it said that, man... Let's go to these verses, man. It, I'm, I can't even go to it. Y'all find it for me, all right, when I say this. But it says that the Spirit gives life and peace. Which verse is that? Life and peace. That's what the Spirit gives, right? It's like verse 5 or something, verse 6. All right? It's 6? All right. Okay, I'm going to read it. Or somebody read it. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. All right. <coughs> Alright, so like, let's break that down, man. The mind governed by the flesh is death, man. There's a way that seems right to man, but it's ways in, in. I gotta finish it. Destruction. <laughs> but the mind, so like, if you just go around through life, because Brother Wayne said, which one is easier to do? What comes easy doesn't last. What lasts doesn't come easy. 
Jesus even said, humble yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. When he said, take up my cross, that was an indicator back in that time period. That was kind of an offense, offensive thing to say. Because take up your cross. Why would I take up a cross? I'm not a criminal. I ain't never done nothing wrong. Take up a cross. Be persecuted. Why I got to be persecuted? I'm a good person. I've done nothing wrong. You know? So the mind governed by the flesh is death, man. So, like, Jesus said, take up your cross. Humble yourself, right? So, like, does, you get what I'm saying? I don't even got to finish that. All right. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Jesus gives life in peace. What is the peace of God? What is that? If I was to ask you guys, what's the peace of God? What is it? Okay. It's a lot of things, right? Contentment. All right, so also the peace of God is, you know, when you live in the flesh, you know, before I was saved, I didn't know where I was going. I fret and worried about heaven and hell all the time. But when I became, when I got the spirit, when the spirit came upon me, I got confirmation of where I'm going. I could die right now and know where I'm going. Why? Because I believe in Christ, and Christ told me I'm his, and nobody else can take you away. He, he, he uh, put his home in me. That's another verse I was going to go to. But what y'all got, man, before I go any further, man? Where, where y'all at? No, nah, we can go anywhere. Let's let's go where y'all want to go. Where y'all what what stands out to y'all about the lesson? What y'all what we talked about so far that y'all want to say? You know what? Just let's verse talk. Seven. Verse seven. seven. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Okay. We've been talking about that, and and if we have any kind of a. Uh, Things that's in our heart that's not pleasing to God is contrary to Him, okay. and He don't like it, and He don't live there. Okay. It's just like the house you were talking about. If we got anything in us that's not pleasing to Him, He's not living there. All right, all right, and we're gonna go to that. So she's yeah. saying Christ ain't gonna be in no sinful body. Have no mm -hmm. sinful body. No. And, and if you think about it. When Jesus went to the cross, they said in that time when, you know, he said those seven words, that was when Christ took his spirit out of the body. Yeah. That body. That's the reason he said those words. And they said, and then that's when we all was able to be saved, you know, through him. Because they said we can pray for this, pray for that. But everything we pray for is in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So all we got to do is just pray that Jesus continue to be in us and the Holy Spirit lives in us. And then we'll be okay. Okay. And also, it's, it's in uh, verse uh, 7 and 8. Yeah, it's, it's saying that living in the flesh, living in this world, that's no way we please him. Okay. We are not pleasing him. Then what, if you're sowing all your seeds here on this earth and not heavenly things, we're not pleasing him and we won't be in heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you guys a really profound question. Y'all ready for this? All right. This is really deep. Who in here is free? Uh, who in here? I'm just going to read it. Who in here is free, does not sin anymore, is perfect. Yeah, all right. Who in here doesn't sin anymore at all? Who in here hasn't sinned in a long time? So everybody agreed that y'all still sinning, right? So you're still gu you're guilty. Even if you ain't commit a sin, that one sin that was your worst sin ever, you ain't commit that sin again. Does that make you righteous? No. Okay. So here, y'all ready for this question? Can a gay person make it into heaven? A gay person, a homosexual, can they make it into heaven? Okay, I, I'm going to ask another question. A homosexual who is married with, to the same sex, well, of course, they're, they're homosexuals who are married to the same sex, <laughs> can they make it to heaven? 
That's a deep question, right? Yeah. Based on this text, right? Because you said living by the flesh, right? Right. Homosexuals have the right to be miserable, just like heterosexuals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only difference is that they were the same sex. They're going to be miserable just like a man and a woman in a relationship. Right. Gonna be yeah. They suffer the same exact things we right. suffer. Right. So Thank I don't know what the big thing is about homosexuals. <laughs> I ain't got a problem with it. Okay. They deserve that, that, that. That's something nobody will wish that on their self. Mm -hmm. I always had that debate with people when they talk about that. Nobody would choose to be that. Look what society does to a person like that. They always putting them down. I'm pretty sure that man ain't stood up and say, you know what? I think I just like all guys, so I'm gonna date all guys. Don't no girl say, I think I like girl. I'm gonna date girl. That's something that's in your DNA. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. I don't believe you can be converted. Converted is something you do in jail. When you saw that somebody do something to you. If you free and you choose this or that sex or race, that's you. That ain't that that, that somebody that did when you was a kid and made you grow up like that. You was always like that. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's what I think. Because remember, in the book of James, it says everybody has a sin that entices them. Do you pick the sin that entices you? No. Now think about it. Like whatever sin that you really struggle with, let's be honest with ourselves. Did you select that one? You choice. It's choice. Right. Cause Paul even said it. The things I want to do, I don't I do. Don't do it but the things I don't want to do, I keep on doing. That's everybody. Yeah. The homosexual, the drunk, yes. the childless. It's everybody. Nobody's yes. exempt. Uh, but she was trying to say something. The question that you asked. What is your opinion on that question you asked about? Oh, I'm about to go to it. Okay. I was going to say, I have actually asked to like a guy and a female what made them decide to go that way. I just wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Which, I have asked numerous people that, and a lot of times I got, well, I was raped as a child by this or by that. So mentally they feel like they're unworthy to, ha to actually have uh, a mate from a different race. Right. Right. I got it. I'm about to end it, but like, what are you trying to say? To, to answer your question, who was homosexual? Uh, Go to heaven. Go to heaven. Yeah. First Corinthians. Okay. Yep. Uh, six, verses nine through eleven. Here we go. But do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Such were, such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. Yeah, thank you. So that's what I was going to say. It said in that verse, those who practice homosexuality. Right. Those who practice right. adultery. Those who pra It's a practice, something you do on a daily basis. It's a habit. You do it without even considering the consequences of what you're doing. But the Spirit of God, does it not hold you back from doing the things that you really want to do? You remember I asked earlier, I said, what would happen if you just didn't do anything into the house and you left the, the windows open in the house? What would happen to that house? So living in the flesh is like that. You just live how, another question. What would happen to your life if you just did whatever the heck you wanted to do without any care in the world for anybody and just did the things that you really wanted to do? What would happen to your life? Would your life look different? But if you, <laughs> if you take and read your Bible mm -hmm. and practice and study your Bible, mm -hmm. these questions really will change you. Okay. But if that's if you really want to change, and asking God and the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Mm -hmm. But see, man, if we don't want God to come into our lives and clean us up, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. Right. And so, like, the whole point of all this, like, Romans 6, verse 15 through 18, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means, Right. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, 
which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that through, I mean, though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of the teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. So then also, this is the text, right? Romans uh, 8, verse 12 through 14. Look at that with me. Mm -hmm. This is the end of the lesson, guys. Mm -hmm. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. We have an obligation. But it is not to the flesh. Not to live according to it. Not to do what you want to do. See, everybody on earth has a choice. My dad wants... Who doing that? Dad gum. That's not my video. But, uh... Dang. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just... <laughs> so we have an obligation, right? Not to live according to the flesh. You have a choice. God could have made us like robots. My dad used the analogy one time as a kid. God could have made each and every one of us like robots. To automatically serve him. To, is that love if he did that? To automatically make you a robot and automatically make you serve him? No, he gave you free choice. That's love right there. So if you really wanted to love somebody and show them that you love them, what are you going to do? You're going to do things that... Shows honor to them. You want to do things that show respect, you know? All right, so I'm going to keep on going. But not to live to the flesh, but to live according, or not to live, yeah, all right, all right, right there. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you do what you want to do and live how you want to live, there's a penalty to pay. You may not know it, but God does. He warned us. He warned us for a reason. It's his creation. He created everything, so he knows, right? We don't know. We ain't lived as long as God lived, so why are we questioning him? All right, but if by the Spirit you put to death, the misdeeds of the body, you will live. All right? For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. See, all of us have a choice. It's hard. Life ain't easy. That's why it's so hard to live by the flesh. And it's so, I mean, it's so hard to live by the Spirit. And it's easy to live by the flesh. Because it's easy to do what you want to do. It's easy to procrastinate. It's easy to be lazy. Both of those are sins. It's easy to just go through life with no purpose and just watching freaking Netflix all day. And pooping. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. But, you know, like, it's just easy to coast through life and do nothing with your life. Right? But it's hard to live by the Spirit, to do what you were designed and divined and purposed to do. How many of y'all are living in your purpose? How many of y'all are really doing what God called you to do? This stuff ain't easy. You got to put in the work. You can't just be Michael Jordan. You got to put in the work to be Michael Jordan. You got to go through the obstacles and the hurdles. And he didn't get... He didn't make his seventh grade team, but that didn't stop Michael from being Michael. You know, Kobe Bryant, man, my favorite basketball player of all time. You know how injuries he had? He basically injured his whole body. But he disciplined his body like Paul said. I disciplined my body. I beat it under submission. I made it surrendered to Christ and following this law, right? So that's what this passage is talking about. You can't do it without the spirit. Call to life in the spirit. Man, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.